badly exterminating products. They work for exterminators, they'll work for you. Available at Lindale Hardware and Grand Avenue Ace. Headache sufferers, have you been told to live with it? Then get a second opinion. Call the St. Clair Chiropractic Clinic now and get a free spinal examination and this contour analysis screening test. Simply call 698-6566. That's 698-6566. And set up your appointment for a free spinal examination. That's 698-6566. The St. Clair Chiropractic Clinic. The Today Show, weekday mornings at 7 on TV 11. Hi, we're at the Minnesota State Fair getting ready for opening day. Good morning, Good morning 11 country. Now, from the Action Center of the Twin Cities, News 11 Sunrise. With John Bachman, Marty Burns Wolf, Steve Carroll on sports, and meteorologist Sally Patrick. Good morning and welcome to Sunrise. <laughs> this is midweek. It's Wednesday. You realize that? August 20th August already. 20th. I'm Andrea Shane in for Marty Burns Wolf. 64 degrees this morning. And we are supposed to have a little more humidity today than we had really? yesterday. I, I think forgot that. If I recall what Roy said to us yesterday, that's what we expected. Well, let's today. see if he's still singing that song. Good morning, Roy. It pleases me enormously that you remembered what we said yesterday. <laughs> yes, a little more humidity, and it's a gentle morning, but we are expecting rain today, and I'll tell you when and how much in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Roy. Thank you, Roy. Topping sunrise, during the early morning hours, another truck has rolled over. The semi overturned at 494 and Highway 61 in Newport around 2.30 a.m. The driver escaped the accident without injury. However, the stretch of roadway was closed for several hours because the coal on board spilled onto the streets. The road is open again at this hour. Another stretch of roadway affected by a truck rollover is also open this morning, as Carolyn Marinin reports. This was a scene just 24 hours ago on Highway 169 in Anderson Lakes Parkway in Eden Prairie. A tanker carrying over 8,000 gallons of gasoline erupted in flames, leaving the driver severely burned. The tanker burned for an hour and a half, causing heavy damage to the southbound lane of 169. Overnight, highway construction crews worked to repair this road. This was not the safest spot to be, and crews had a hard time working here overnight. This stretch of 169 is a dangerous strip of highway, mainly because it's only two lanes and heavily traveled by trucks. So cones, flares, and workers kept the sometimes heavy traffic inside narrowed lanes while the road was graded, asphalt laid, and rolled. This road was already slated for repair, but the accident stepped it up. This was scheduled for an overlay this week, but because of the accident, the burning gasoline, the deterioration of the pavement, we had to bring a milling machine in, mill the damaged material out, and then my paving crew comes in, and we put an overlay on. The road crew finished around 4 this morning, but they'll be back here again tonight paving the northbound lane. For Sunrise, Carolyn Mirren, News 11, Eden Prairie. There are plans to make 169 into a four-lane divided highway, but work on just the first part of that improvement won't begin for two years. The Eden Prairie accident has shocked Indian Head Trucking in Roseville. Ed Wooshala had been a driver there for 21 years. Wooshala was known for his methodical approach to his dangerous job. Co-workers say he was always very cautious. It, you know, been all of his years here were as a tank truck driver for us. And drove a sleeper team and um, did what he was asked. Always was did a fine job. Fourteen of Wushala's years with Indian Head were accident-free. Tuesday was his first major accident. Wushala is now in critical condition. St. Paul police were involved in an early morning chase. The chase began at Marshall and Grotto at about 3 o'clock when police spotted a car reported to be stolen. The suspects were able to get out of the police's view and they did not catch him. Police believe that the suspects entered a nearby house but could not find him. Police in Minneapolis are looking for four suspects following an early morning stabbing. The victim was stabbed at about 1 o'clock at 1901 14th Avenue South in South Minneapolis. According to police, they are searching for four black males who were seen in a light green Oldsmobile. The victim suffered minor injuries. Minneapolis police and the FBI will continue their search this morning for a bank robber. The Northwest Bank in 47th and Chicago was robbed by a man who gave tellers a note saying he had a gun. He made off with an undisclosed amount of cash. Police say they are looking for a man described as being black. 
and in his late 40s. Striking workers at the FMC plant in Fridley are closer to returning to their jobs this morning. That's because negotiators for FMC and the workers have reached a tentative agreement. They did that last night. Both sides say they will not release the details of the agreement until the union ratifies it. The FMC star strike started four weeks ago. And the Hormel company in Austin will probably resume contract talks with its workers this week. The Hormel vice president says talks with the trustee for the Austin workers and the union for six other plants could start tomorrow. The contracts for all seven plants expire September 1st. Six of Minnesota's ten gubernatorial candidates are getting ready to challenge each other in Duluth this morning. From the IR party, Cal Ludeman, James Lindau, and Wallace Bratrude will appear at a live news conference joined by George Latimer, Andrew Olson, and Phil Rattay from the state's DFL party. Governor Perpich will not appear. The news conference starts at 1 p.m. The Minnesota State Fair is just a day away now. Preparations for opening day continued through the early morning hours. Livestock exhibitors were busy rounding up their animals on the fairgrounds. The potential blue ribbon winners will be on display in several livestock barns. It's exciting. Yeah, we will be out there at 5 o'clock. Yes, Kirsten Lindquist and I will be doing the 5 o'clock show starting tomorrow. That's and you will also be here for sunrise, too. We're not going to let you yes, off the hook. Yes, this week I will be. <laughs> it's a nice schedule. It'll be a full week, yeah. It'll be a nice day tomorrow. Today, if you were out there preparing, perhaps it would be a little mm. damp. Not good for the barns. Possibly not. Well, inside is all right. The temperature <laughs> at the moment is at 64 degrees. The wind is from the southeast at 10, and it is cloudy here in the Twin Cities. We have the uh, dew point at 60 degrees. Relative humidity is 87%, and the pressure is at 30.08, and the pressure is falling. Uh, Doppler 11 radar is where the action is this morning. The rain has begun already. Uh, fairly substantial amounts. We have some thunderstorms up here between Stanstone and Duluth. Some brief heavy rains have been encountered there. And uh, also further to the west, down between St. Cloud and Redwood Falls, there are also some showers. And in the area of Litchfield, some fairly heavy rains, all moving to the east at about 35 miles per hour. So into the western metro area this morning, oh, about 8 o'clock, and then across the metro after that. And rain through much of the day. Until later today, we have the... Uh, passage of the front, cold front, which has been lurking out to the west for the last couple of days, uh, moving in our direction, and by this evening should push all of the moisture away. So put that into uh, words, syllables, and the forecast for the Twin Cities shows showers and thunderstorms today, 76 to 80 degrees, with southeast winds becoming northwest with the passage of the front around supper time. And then for tonight, showers ending, clearing 53 to 57 with northwest winds. And then for tomorrow, uh, we're expecting just a really, really nice day with temperatures yeah. right up around 80 and much drier. So just kind of forget today and we'll get to tomorrow as sure. quickly as we can. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Roy. Coming up, a fast food chain is offering something new and it's not even food. And we'll tell you why so many Americans are driving foreign cars. That and more when we return. Budget Power, the home improvement expert, brings you the hottest values of the season during the sizzle sale. Kincaid tub and shower doors are all on sale. Choose from space-saving neo-angles, elegant mirrored doors, stylish designer glass and mirrored tri-panels in a variety of finishes and styles. Save on Kincaid's exciting new color trim and color coordinate your bath. Brighten your kitchen or work area with energy-saving fluorescent lighting from International. Available in stylish oak or walnut wood grain finishes. Shop the sizzle sale at Budget Power, the home improvement expert. You know, I believe that life is what you make it. And part of making the most of life is having someone to share it with. So being over 45 and single again, I knew what I was missing. Then I called Older is Better. They introduced me to some very special ladies who enjoy many of the same things that I do. So if you're over 45 and single, they can help you just as they've helped thousands of others. So call them, because life is what you make it. Everything's priced to go during Roseville Chrysler Plymouth's final summer clearance. Like LeBaron GTS's lots in stock now, but at up to $2,500 off, they won't last long. Or get a sharp new laser. All models now drastically reduced by $1,500. Plus, Roseville makes it even easier to buy with low 9.5% financing. These are all brand new cars, the last of the Chrysler's 1986 production. Save up to $2,500 on LeBaron GTS's. $1,500 on all lasers. 9.5 on everything in stock during Roseville Chrysler Plymouth's final summer clearance. Everything goes. Catch it before it's gone. Time right now is 6.08. A Wisconsin job training bill is ready for Governor Earl's signature this morning. It's expected Earl will sign the bill, which provi will provide funding to American Motors to retain nearly 3,500 auto workers. The $3 million proposal was approved by the Wisconsin legislature early this summer. 
In our business report, a U.S. automotive manufacturer is recalling one of its products. That's because a defect could be jeopardizing the lives of thousands of school kids. And Kara King is here with more. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Good morning. John. Well, General Motors is recalling nearly 4,300 school buses. The buses, which were manufactured between 1983 and 1986, are believed to possibly have a faulty brake system. Now, General Motors says they are not aware of any accidents or injuries due to the brake system's condition. In our business outlook, OPEC oil nations are reducing oil production in an effort to drive up oil prices, but prices are stuck right around the $15 a barrel mark. A year ago, oil prices were nearly twice as high as they are now. Pure Later Courier has announced they will spend nearly $20 million in an effort to boost sales. The company reported a $43 million loss in 1985. Their new ad campaign will feature Warner Brothers Roadrunner and begins next Monday. Another airline merger looks like it could be in the early stages. California-based Jet American Airlines is considering offers from both Delta Airlines and Alaska Airlines. Delta has started a bidding war by offering a dollar per share more for Jet America stock than Alaska Airlines. Jet America is having financial troubles and is looking for a way to restructure its debt. In recent years, consumer groups have been pressuring fast food restaurants to provide customers with easy access to nutritional information. And the fast food chain McDonald's is doing just that. Kirsten Lindquist has this report. Yeah. Uh, cheeseburger, milk, hamburger, fries, small orange juice. The next time you order a quick bite at your local McDonald's, you ought to take advantage of a free offer, too. It's not on the menu, but it'll help you learn more about the items that are posted there. Last Friday, McDonald's started handing out this 46-page booklet listing the ingredients in each of its products. And portion by portion, it also counts calories and shows sodium and cholesterol content. It's easy to get a hold of one of these booklets. They're available at every McDonald's restaurant around the country now, including all 70 here in the Twin Cities. Consumer groups have been putting pressure on fast food chains to label food items individually, but McDonald's says the booklet is a better idea because it provides information before anything is bought. And customers we talk to seem happy to take the pamphlet home. This would be handy because my family members are um, cholesterol conscious. I think it's very good. It's something that uh, I think people are very conscious of. And uh, this is information that uh, put in their hands, I think they'll use it. A McDonald's spokeswoman admits some definitions of some additives may not satisfy health food fans. And the company has a hotline to answer any further questions. For Sunrise, Kirsten Lindquist, News 11. I think milk's our best nutritional value in this little book. <laughs> I don't want to know the calories. <laughs> I was going to say, you were looking awfully furtively for a calorie counter on that. We've got to admit it's junk food. But... <laughs> that Thank is you. a book. That is not a pamphlet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's real thick. Thanks a lot. You Thanks, bet. Kara. U.S. automotive manufacturers have noticed a recent drop in sales figures. One reason, millions of Americans have decided to buy foreign cars. Money reporter Steve Crowley takes a closer look at the Japanese car invasion. Charlie Borman likes going from point A to point B, in this case from home to work, for as little money as possible. But he still wanted a new car. Charlie picked out a stripped Nissan Sentra, only 5788. All the ones that were there all had all the goodies on it. And they're the ones for 8,000, 8,900, 7,900, and so forth and so on. And I didn't want that. I just wanted a car just with plain five speed and no hoopla. Lisa Pierce sells about 20 cars a month for a Nissan dealer. She liked the Sentra so much, she bought one herself. What have you got for me for about $6,000? We have a 1987 Nissan Sentra, five-speed, air conditioning. Pretty it's fancy car. It's not really car. a cheap car. It's a nice-looking car for the price. Now, before you get all excited about this $6,000 car thing, keep in mind it doesn't take very long for those prices to climb up to eight dollars or $9,000. You have to ask for the car without the options. The real low end is not Japanese, it's Yugoslavian. The Yugo for $31.90. The Japanese can't touch this price. Then there's the Korean-born Hyundai for $49.95. It'll be the hottest seller in 1987. Then the Japanese cars with less than a $6,000 base. The Toyota Tercel, $56.88. The Mitsubishi Mirage, $56.95. And the Sentra we talked about for $59.95. These are the list prices. Ask for lower prices, but you'll probably get a discount only on the options. Many base prices are not negotiable, so ask for or wait for the dealer specials. Another twist, a lot of buyers, including women, are buying trucks today to keep the prices down. Juliet Eckhart bought this truck for three reasons. She wanted a Toyota. 
She wanted the economy of a pickup, and she wanted to have fun driving it. I knew I had to, to get a replacement car because my car was in terrible shape. And um, I had been thinking about getting a small Toyota pickup, and um, so that's what I went for. So if you'd like to buy your subcompact dream car at the lowest possible price with the best financing, here's my list of things to do to accomplish all that. Compare prices with no fewer than three dealers. Looking through newspapers and watching TV ads helps. Negotiate a discount on the options you want. Keep in mind, air conditioning and AM FM stereos help sell a car faster when you're ready to sell. Ask the dealer, will you get a better price if you order a car or buy one off the lot? To get the best price, you might have to settle, not get the exact car you want. Many Japanese cars come with standard interiors, standard option packages. And if you'd like more information on low-priced American and Japanese cars, just write me here at the station and please send along your self-addressed stamped envelope. Steve Crowley for News 11 Sunrise. As Steve mentioned, you can answer your automotive questions by dropping a self-addressed stamped envelope to his attention at CARE 11, 8811 Olson Memorial Highway in Minneapolis, the zip 55427. Still to come on Sunrise this morning, we're going to tell you about some income tax deductions you may be overlooking. And the twins did something last night that they haven't done in quite some time. I think you can guess what, but we'll tell you exactly. <laughs> and we'll tell you how trouble on farms is affecting big businesses. And we'll show you what's keeping federal agents busy in the southwestern part of the United States this morning. That and more when Sunrise continues. Last year's Northland Ford closeout with 7.7% APR was a huge success. And this year is going to be even bigger. Listen to why. I got a great closeout price on this new Temple and my choice of 6.9% or $600 cash back. I took the 600 bucks. Bring on your icky weather. Me and my new Bronco 2 are ready. Right time, right price. 140 horses, five speed stick. My Ranger's a mean machine. Find out why this is the time to buy. See your Northland Ford dealer today. Here's Mary Lou Retton for the Neighborhood Bowling Center. All right, for fun, you can't be bowling. Being with your family and friends, and you're a winner no matter what your score is. So come on, America, for the fun of it, go for 10. Bowling, the all-American sport for all Americans. Mary Lou's right. Bowling is lifetime fun for everyone. And now's a great time to get your friends and family together and join a fall league at your nearby Neighborhood Bowling Center. As a student at Northwestern Electronics Institute, I'm learning the basic technical knowledge I need to pursue my career goals. With Northwestern Electronics Institute, I made the right decision. Follow the winner. Choose N -E -I. Northwestern Electronics Institute. Call 781-4881. I'm a winner. 64 degrees this morning, now 17 minutes past the hour. Well, golfers this morning tee off at the Minnesota Valley Golf Course, the country club, with confidence. Members of the club saved their favorite fairways by pulling some green out of their pockets to the tune of one and a third million dollars for a down payment. The land was to be sold to a contractor to build 94 houses, shortening the course, but now it will belong to the players who made a big recovery shot to benefit them all. And that's putting it lightly. Yes. Very Beautiful nice course. Effort. It was built back in the 1920s and one mm -hmm. of the finer courses. And in the you area. were out there yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we welcome Pete Gadero once again this morning. He is in for Steve Carroll. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, John. Good morning, Twins did something last night they haven't done in a while. They did. It had been five games, but they won. They had a four-game losing right. streak going into last night, but they won the game. And the reason they won the game is a strong play of Kirby Puckett. Twin center fielder Kirby Puckett is at the top of the American League batting race this morning with a 349 average. After going three for four last night, Puckett passed the Red Sox Wade Boggs, who went one for five. Puckett also hit his 25th home run of the year to lead the Twins past the Sox five to one. Uh, twin starter Mark Portugal won his game, won his second start in a row last night. Why don't we take a look at the highlights from last night's game? Puckett hit his home run in the third inning to deep center field. This, this, uh, the Twins led the game one to nothing at this point. This was Puckett's team leading 25th home run. And not to be outdone, the next batter was Kent Herbeck, and he hits a shot way deep into right field. 477 feet, the Twins led two to nothing. That, tied Her that ties Herbie and Kirby for the team lead in homers. And not to be outdone again, Gary Gaetti gives himself a birthday present and a share in the team lead for homers by hitting this ball into the left field seats for a two run homer. The Twins led five to nothing at that point and went on to a five to one win. Game three is tonight in the Dome at 730. 
And despite losing to the Twins, the Red Sox hold their five and a half game lead over the Yankees because the Yanks lost to Seattle seven to three. Milwaukee beat Cleveland behind Paul Molitor's two home runs. The Blue Jays beat up on the White Sox five to one, and it was Oakland over Baltimore. Kansas City's Frank White hit an 11th inning home run to clip the Rangers 9-8, and California and Detroit split a doubleheader in the Motor City. Over in the National League, it was the Braves over the Cubbies 7-2. Kevin Bass of the Astros hit a solo home run to beat the Pirates 1-0. It was the Reds over the Cards 6-1. San Diego's Kevin McReynolds had five RBIs as uh, the Padres beat the Expos 7-1. And Philadelphia just got by San Francisco 6-5. In the Mets game, uh, the Mets held on to beat the Dodgers 6-4. The bizarre play of the day belongs to Mets center fielder Lenny Dykstra. On this fly ball to center field, Dykstra comes in, Tim Tuffle goes out, and it looks like Dykstra's got the ball. Where's the ball? Well, it turns out it's in his glove. But is the runner safe or is he out? Well, let's take a look at the replay. Dykstra does catch the ball and it does stay in the glove, but the glove must remain on or be a part of the body for it to be a legal catch. So the runner is safe. You can look it up in your rule book. The Vikings will practice this morning with nine less players following the second round of player cuts yesterday. The most notable player released by the Vikes was running back Maurice Turner. In fact, this was the fourth time in three years that, that Turner had been released by the Vikings. Turner played for the Vikings in ten games last year. Along with Turner, the Vikings released safety Mike Slayton, kick returner and wide receiver John Armstrong, tackle Rick Heckinger, wide receiver Mike Northcutt, and Mankato State punter Joel Nielsen. Placed on the waiver, waived injured reserve list were receiver Joe Kormeyer, uh, cornerback and cornerback Ricky Green. If no team claims either of those two players, they will be placed on the injured reserve list. And offensive tackle Grant Fiesel was also placed on the injured reserve list. And one note this morning, the Toledo Mud Hens have asked the Twins to drop them from their minor league system. They're going to seek affiliation elsewhere. In They're the not major happy leagues. with the Twins. They want a team closer to the Toledo area. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I suppose that would help draw in then more people to the Toledo games. Makes sense. That's, okay. That's Thanks, the main Pete. reason why. Thank you, Pete. Sure. Today is Wednesday, August 20th, and it was in August of 1948 that the baseball world mourned the loss of one of its greatest players. George Herman Ruth, the babe, was dead at the age of 53. Ruth had become famous, of course, for hitting a record 714 home runs during his career. His talents made him a popular figure at Yankee Stadium and with children everywhere. But just a few years after retiring, the babe was stricken with throat cancer. When he lost his battle with cancer in 1948, thousands of mourners lined the streets of New York to pay their respects. On August 20th, 1940, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill paid tribute to the Royal Air Force, saying never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. And also on this day in 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signed an anti-poverty measure totaling nearly $1 billion. And for those of you born today in whatever year, your horoscope says look within for answers. We celebrate that news with actor Sam Melville, who is 46 today, musician Isaac Hayes, who is 44, and our own NBC newscaster Connie Chung, who is 40 today. All on August 20. Coming up, we will tell you how the U.S. government plans to take care of some of its surplus grain. And we'll tell you how the farm crisis is affecting big businesses. We'll have that when we return. The clearance at your Chrysler Plymouth store sends our new cars right out the door. Out we go! Out we go! Everything goes! Get $1,500 cash back on new Chrysler LeBaron GTS Premium or low 5.5% financing. Plus, the 550 protection plan and a great clearance deal. Everything goes! Everything goes! See your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Budget Power, the home improvement expert, brings you the hottest values of the season during the sizzle sale. Save on Enterprise 10-Year House Paint at Budget Power. Enterprise 10-Year House Paint covers smoothly in just one coat, is available in a wide spectrum of colors, and it's warranted five ways for 10 years. Sink into the warmth of bathing luxury with the soothing, soaking, swirling water of a Jacuzzi World Blue Bath. Jacuzzi, the real one, the only one. And all models are on sale now during the sizzle sale at Budget Power. The home improvement expert. Introducing Folgers Red Brick Bag. It's the freshest idea in coffee. We got a fresh idea. It's gonna hit you like a brick. We take fresh coffee and do a little trick. Take out all the air, make a solid brick of flavor. Open up to freshness, you're gonna savor. Mountain grown Folgers in a red brick bag. It's gonna hit you, hit you, hit you like a brick. Folgers Brick Bag, the freshest idea in regular and decaffeinated coffee. 
To everything, there is a season. And this summer at Dayton's, you can save on Karastan carpets, but you won't have to pay for a long time. Not until long after summer, not even till long after fall. It's Dayton's Karastan carpet sale with deferred billing. Save 15 to 30% with your Dayton's flexible account. And your first payment won't be due until February 1987. At Dayton's, you save now and pay later. Much later. The Karastan carpet sale. No payments until February 1987. The time right now is 624. There's something fishy in the air at the State Fair this year. The Department of Natural Resources is setting up its display, a display of fish housed by a cement pond. About 50 different species of little swimmers are in hand, and all are species native to Minnesota. The Minnesota State Fair opens tomorrow. And we'll have to get our fishing poles out. No, no <laughs> I can't do that. You they wouldn't can't like do that. that. No. Shame on you. No. You've been thinking about <laughs> I it. I know. Terrible. We're going to bypass you and go right to the thermometer. <laughs> in, the, in the Twin Cities at the moment, the temperature is at 64 degrees, or 60. it is 64 degrees. The wind is from the southeast. Not a multiple choice. Southeast at 10 miles per hour. And we have a dew point temperature, which is 60. Relative humidity is 87%. And the pressure at 30.08, and it's falling. And the first view we want to check is Doppler 11 because there is a, an increasing line of uh, showers and thunderstorms stretching all the way from Redwood Falls and now filling in and stretching all the way up near Duluth. Some of those capable of some vivid lightning strikes and there have been some brief heavy rains, but there is nothing in the category of severe weather expected with this particular batch, at least at the moment. And as we look further out to see what uh, may be in store after that line, well, there's a lot of cloudiness all over the western sections that are moving toward us and so forth. Much of the day, it certainly is going to be cloudy and we have a chance of the continued showers and thunderstorms. Here is the frontal system, uh, out ahead of which all that cloudiness and its movement is in this direction. And so by sometime later today, it should be past us. So today we're just going to have a rainy day on and off showers and thunderstorms, but the front is close enough that uh, the end of that is all in sight. Now here's an idea of how much rain could be associated with this system. Uh, we're in an area here in southern Minnesota, could be as much as one inch of rain with those uh, brief heavy rains that are part of the outlook. There is also a slight risk of an outbreak of uh, severe weather, just a, a slight risk where we are for the balance of this day as part of the forecast. And now to see what's actually going to happen in the front that we looked at from the wide shot earlier, close up by, oh, about supper time today. We're expecting the front to have passed and slowly during the evening hours as it goes past us, uh, the shower and thunderstorm activity will have cleared away and the air will have dried out, should be dandy and by tomorrow should be particularly pleasing. Uh, right here in the Twin Cities, we are expecting uh, the rain that we saw in the Doppler to be moving into the sections of the metro area probably within the hour. Here are the forecast details. Uh, Twin Cities for today, yes indeed, showers and thunderstorms, 76 to 80 degrees with southeast winds becoming northwest with the front late today, 5 to 15. And then for tonight, showers ending clearing 53 to 57 with northwest winds for tomorrow. Anticipate that we will have mostly sunny skies. It'll be less humid, 74 to 78 degrees, and winds from the north northeast at 5 to 15. Want to take a peek at the extended outlook? Sure. Let's move on through the weekend, and it shows for Friday sunshine, for Saturday partly cloudy, and for Sunday partly cloudy. Temperatures right around 80. <laughs> it's a very pleasant amount of information, John. <laughs> you quickly got over today too. Thank you, Roy. In case you're just joining us, here are the stories from headlines this morning. A truck rollover caused a bit of a mess on Highway 49 in Newport overnight. A semi loaded with a petroleum byproduct went out of control on the ramp from 494 to 61 North. The uh, black residue from the truck spilled onto the highway and blocked the road at about 2.30. The driver was not Weather's in. Steel-belted radial.